Hey everybody, this is Jason Stallings, and welcome to the Artifice Podcast, the uh, video edition. <laughs> and today I want to talk to you about <clears throat> excuse me, a recent uh, commission that I worked on for a uh, previous client that I had originally worked for in 2020, uh, Lines and Simmons Law Firm, L- uh, Lines and Simmons LLP, otherwise known as. Uh, in any case, uh, I was contacted by them recently, uh, late spring, early summer of 2023, to create a new piece of art for their 12th floor office space. And when I had my discussion with the firm, the only real uh, feedback I got from them was that I would be needing to create something that was a little more minimal, so to speak, than what I normally do. And this uh, partially had to do with the wall finish of the uh, front office that kind of adorned the right hand, right front side of the office space that had this black and metallic kind of textured mix. And I went into the office, met with the uh, primary uh, lead attorney, and we kind of discussed... The, the overall ideas first. And I did research to kind of get an idea of what was on their case uh, repertoire more recently. And uh, this kind of goes back to 2020 when I created a large 8 by 10 foot pa- uh, painting for them. Uh, and there's a whole story behind that that uh, I have in another article and video. But the... Uh, yeah, this is the original piece, and this is the new piece that I made for them. <clears throat> and this is a really interesting kind of an experience in that uh, I didn't necessarily want to repeat the same ideas that I had used previously. And there are a lot of really cool things that were like artifacts that related to their cases in the first piece. and. I wanted to use a similar approach, and they kind of agreed that was something they were interested in doing. So the difference in this case was that I uh, wanted, ultimately after going through uh, the process of making four smaller pieces, I decided that the uh, main focus would be more on atmosphere, feel, energy, and that the visual focus would be more on broader shapes and I would find ways to incorporate the iconography that told the story of their newer cases in a different way. Um, One to leave this sense of open space visually but also to kind of you know hide the uh, objects in iconography like they're sort of pieces of evidence and the initial part of this project involved me making three or four uh, small 40 by 36 uh, paintings that sort of uh, told a story about like different elements of the things like cranes. There was a reference to a, a music festival uh, where there was a large-scale personal injury case. Um, not sure how much I should necessarily name specific things here, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to link the uh, website to, for the law firm if you're interested in learning a bit more about them. But uh, what was interesting about working on this was that I could, you know, write out ideas that were like, just um, free, sorry, th- uh, free improvisational, like free flowing, like stream of consciousness, and that would include things like, okay, like maybe besides the objects that relate directly to the cases, are there things like animals, plants, how everyday objects, and uh, it's an interesting experience making art for this type of client because you have to be 
very selective and choosy in use your best judgment about like, okay, what would work? What would be maybe a little hokey like to me? And I kind of have to make my best guess about how that would read to the client. Uh, like in this case, there's this owl that's kind of hidden in there. And I think I found in my research there was like a thing in Japanese culture where an owl means like it relates to wisdom and protectiveness and etc. A big thing that was a theme in the last painting and so that we discuss is the idea of like communicating protectiveness of the client. And that's kind of a cool thing because like I, th I, this goes back to my experience developing work in like editorial illustration in, in college. <clears throat> Where you come up with ideas that subtly hint towards a idea. Now in editorial you have to be very direct but uh, in fine art, you can be a little more implicit. So um, you have to, but you can also play around with like things that could be interpreted or missing, you know, like things could be interpreted in a number of different ways, but you kind of have free reign to tell your own story with it and come up through in visual language. Uh, so the first, in the first case, I did this kind of white on white uh, thing where I uh, threw back to like earlier pieces like these two and use the kind of color palette that was in influenced by Kazimir Malevich in his white on white paintings and then going back to Russian constructivism but I, I tend to like pick out things I like about different artist styles rather than necessarily following their philosophical ideas to a team. So, uh, in the process of making the sketches, I came up with this and then this. Uh, this one, well, I think it's an interesting piece, uh, didn't quite fit the project in my opinion. And the process of making a painting involves for the, for this uh, particular context, you're making something smaller and you have to know exactly how you're going to go through that process again in a larger scale. Because these, two, uh, I ended up making two pieces for the final and they are about uh, 72 by 96. So this, um, but what I did learn about this that informed this was there's a certain amount of like warmth and humanity that was that were missing from maybe this like I, I like the atmosphere in the field this but the um, what I wanted to communicate about empathy maybe uh, at least in an implicit manner was best communicated to like this and uh, by the time I got to this sketch I was like okay I feel much more confident about what I'm doing and I sort of got to the conclusion, like, okay, you've got the simpler com uh, composition that still fits your style, your look. And uh, as a friend of mine pointed out recently, like, kind of more elevated. <clears throat> so, with that in mind, I came up with these two to propose to the client. And... Ultimately, for the 12th floor space, this is the one we went with, because that was the one that was approved. And this one, I took similar ideas, and based on the pencil sketch I did for the composition, I very quickly put together an idea for that one. And um, the client was very gracious enough to purchase both paintings. The second one is in a different part of their office. Uh, I worked with a designer, I believe, uh, Laura Davis. Was her name. Um, very, very appreciative of her collaboration with that as well as the uh, client. So, um, but this one sits on a different wall, like a more standard wall finish. And there's a difference in the visual impact, though this one is a little bit more dark in color and tone. So it fits like a different type of space. And whereas this one really pops off the wall. As you can see. 
So, with that in mind, I was able to explore things using interference paint, which is not exactly a fluorescent paint, but it is similar. The chemical compounds used for this are like the same kind of compounds used in paint that goes into like making printing money and printing like IDs. So, but the, these are like ton of pigments that don't only really show up if you fly, like shine a light on it and look at it at a certain angle. But what, what's kind of cool about that is it elevated the finished pieces in. Uh, in a way that is a little hard to photograph, but seeing them in person is like, it, it makes a really interesting painting that much more interesting. And it sort of like, <clears throat> ultimately aided in the way that I could communicate the idea. Now, um, whereas Give Me Shelter, the painting I did in 2020, ultimately I sort of spent time developing all these different ideas that told a very conclusive-ish kind of narrative like okay this is what this business does this is how I'm communicating communicating the ideas and you know not only through their artifacts but also different things like that piece I used like a tree trunk in sort of in like a turtle which you know sort of like equating these things to like protectiveness of the client so to speak and this one um I thought about ways to potentially do that, but I ultimately decided to leave the sort of narrative element of these pieces a little more open-ended, which sort of lends itself to the needs and goals of the project. And ultimately, I was pretty happy with the results. And uh, whereas ultimately I was like, okay, concept, 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 but then in this case I was like, okay, like, pull it back and that ended up kind of leading to a more successful piece in the context of what the, I needed to do for this project and I think more recently in things I've consumed like film music art I've become a little more attracted to things that have an open-ended narrative like uh there's a movie I watched yesterday uh like Terrence Mount called Tree of Life and some really beautiful, uh, very abstract imagery in the movie. Uh, and su surprisingly, there are ways that the movie kind of makes me feel like I have this ki extra connection to my own upbringing in Texas and sort of my family, even though I'm not sure if the movie is necessarily about a name when, in particular, that I could say, like, oh, Brad Pitt, like, that reminds me of my grandfather and my father's side. And, how I imagine like a version of like a family similar to mine may have grown up. Um, so, in 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 so in different ways on both sides of the family. So, I am, and, and also like a certain type of music I listen to. There's more of an attraction to like mood, feel, something that feels more open-ended, and abstract. Versus something that is like definitively telling like a concrete story through like lyrics or songs, sounds. So um, this is sort of a direction I've been wanting to take my art, though not necessarily anything direct. But um, yeah, I guess beyond that, uh, it's been an interesting experience creating these paintings. A lot of ups and downs. <laughs> Personally, my life going um, on in the last few months, and uh, now that I've kind of gotten into this pro process, things are much more calmed down. And you know, at, at the end of it, I feel like I've grown creatively, uh, personally, and professionally. I've taken more of a focus on researching places I want to reach out to to get my art in front of people who can get in more spaces like this more in front of more clients like this personally and professionally so uh that's been a really good motivator so anyway uh yeah if you're interested in checking out more of my art please visit jason-stallings.com this video will be linked in an article related to the paintings and uh, also i have a book 
Hint, hint. <laughs> that is available for sale. I also have gallery catalogs. Uh, I've updated this one a little bit. But uh, if you are a gallerist or a designer or somebody interested in uh, maybe representation or selling of my work, um, and you want me to send you one, I'm happy to order one to you. Uh, just go ahead and reach out to me at jason at jason and uh, or if you want to order one yourself, it's available on my website. Um, in any case, uh, thank you very much for watching, and looking forward to bringing more of work to you and more kind of in-depth discussion about my artwork and other things. Um, might be I've thrown around the idea of like uh, doing like a music-related show because. I have all this uh, vinyl and more and a lot of things to say about that, as well as other artists. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Hope you'll have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon.